Welcome to the channel folks, clunkers and classics, and a puppy, and a bunch of kittens. Okay, we are continuing uh, the restoration on the 68 Chevelle Nomad Wagon. Last couple episodes we put on all new suspension, steering, disc brake conversion, and the last episode was the power brake booster and the master cylinder. I just kind of got them wires hanging there for now. Uh, and we made these brake lines, portioning valve, and we had to make the brake lines from there to hook up. Okay, so where we left off, we got the, uh, <clears throat> this goes to the rear brakes here. This line's clear. Everything's good on it. This goes from the right front. Okay, so we found a problem. This is the back. This goes across the differential. And this is where the hard brake line mounts into. So I just now got the brand new uh, hose. And because that's clogged up, plus it's 54 years old. Or assuming it's 54. Okay, so we're going to connect that onto here, put it in the back. This bolts up to the differential. Then there's just a couple little clips that are still on the rear end to hold that in place. Then these ends here uh, screw into the wheel cylinders. So that's the plan of putting this together. And I think that's it. I think that's it for the brake system. It's got some new fluid here. Um, we'll fill her up with fluid and see if anything leaks. And we're a little bit worried about these flares. Um, whether I did them right or I got to do double flares or whatever. The rag joint here should be in, in, in any day now. We'll put that on. Now, I screwed up last time because I wasn't reading the directions. So when I made, okay, uh, the brake pedal housing has two holes in it like this. Okay, and then it was, this was manual brakes, didn't have a power brake booster, so it was connected to the top hole. And that's what I did, I connected it to the hole that it came out of, put in the new bracket and everything or the new uh, deal there to hook it up and put it back together and then then I read the instructions later on and it was saying if it has two holes to put it in the bottom hole because the top hole is uh, for manual brakes bottom holes for so then of course I couldn't remember until I just watched the video now I just uploaded the last video and sure enough when I was showing it there was two holes one upper one lower Although the instruction said it was an inch, inch apart, but it's more than an inch. So I don't know if we can see it in here. This is the bracket here. Uh, I'm going to have to take it back out, I think, because it's got a, a pin in there with a, with a cotter pin. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know how good you can see that. I'm going to have to get a flashlight out here in a little bit. Okay, that's the top hole. That's what it's put in. I might be able to get that out without unbolting everything. Because it just screws in the back. So here's the bottom hole here. Even though the instruction said it was an inch. An inch would be back about in the middle. Uh, so I got to take that cotter pin off and move it down to this one. Just so the uh, rod is in the right direction. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And put on that rear brake stuff. And we'll put in some fluid and we'll try to pump it up a little bit. And may just let it rest overnight and let all the fluid get into the lines. Uh, I got a one-man bleeder thing, but... 
uh, I don't feel like screwing around with that all night okay so that's the plan right now I'll be out here with flashlights it's about to get dark but it's still 100 degrees out at 8 o'clock at night I was working this morning got my poor 15 can there with an old brush there comes a kitty over to help uh, I got most of it done under here but you can see over here I got a little bit of frame and area and then a little bit in the back to do and then this frame here but I got all the floors in the tunnel and all that uh, it's just hard to do it all at once because everything you see all these little drips you start rolling around on here you're filling your hair and arms and arm hair and everything full of that crap because it, it just drips so you gotta kind of do it a little bit at a time so probably tomorrow morning I'll get under here and finish it off and get all that poor 15 under there so this video is going to be about just finishing up stuff like that uh, finishing up all the little stuff we'll get this stuff painted black here uh, I got the uh, glove box lid we'll paint that black inside and out we got the new duct work in there I got a new duct work coming for the uh, driver's side this is for the passenger side we'll get that buttoned up these are for the speakers we'll route them in there once we get the lid in and then we may uh, put that junction box in there somehow see where we can make a good fit for that uh, I put in all this duct work here that goes out through the dash bezel so we're trying I'm trying to get this wrapped up without putting the dash on because we don't want to I don't want to put the dash on yet in case I got to uh, put some of that LS wiring in there I may use the truck cages or something I, I don't know yet just gonna kind of play it by ear um, probably another eight ten days eight I don't know eight days I think for these belt molding still is beginning to be a real pain in the ass uh, this deal here I was gonna start wrapping up the wiring I don't know what I did with the old it had the old style uh, the old style fuse in here and of course it wouldn't connect well, what I did with it I was working on it this morning and Anyway, it takes inline fuse and uh, it wouldn't connect and it was old and uh, uh, rusty. So this, I, I had this, this is a, a deal with a 30 amp fuse in it. Um, so I soldered them in there, the two solder connections. And that goes in this little deal here I'm gonna put a washer or something there actually you can buy this new I'll probably buy a new one anyway I want to tape up all these wires so black electrical tape put that up there um, tape up these tape up all that stuff because see there's gonna be two wiring systems in this car uh, this is the wiring for the AC stuff this is gonna be the wiring for the motor uh, this wiring here goes across out across a core support you got your voltage regulator um, horn relay which is a junction box headlight signals all that so all that's going to be connected so the car the regular you know lights and everything works with the with what's originally in the car and then the LS engine of course it's got its own electrical system there and we'll have to screw around with that see what we will use but hopefully I think I can use all the original stuff except maybe the gauges so yeah basically gonna be have two wiring systems on it so I basically want to save this wiring system uh, of course this is gonna be set up for points and everything and you gotta I gotta do the little conversion to uh, for HEI 
you gotta kind of you gotta kind of convert that over uh and then get get the right ignition wire to go to the coil well yeah it's it's gonna be different on the ls or to the ignition you know you're gonna have the right wire going in to work with the key so anyway all this wiring pretty much got to be saved we're gonna tape it up uh get it all nice so when we wrap up all this little stuff then it's going to be time for the ls swap and the ls swap like i said in the last video is going to be a little time consuming we're going to dismantle this whole truck we dismantle all the front end so its motor comes out easier we're going to take out the cross member the drive front front drive shafts in there back shafts busted uh cross member fenders hood core support bumper uh all that stuff's coming out and and the main thing is the wiring i'm going to save as much wiring as i can kind of mark it as i go so that'll be next after we wrap up all the little stuff on this which might be time consuming so anyway let me get started with this and uh i'll be back okay guys you can see that moved it down from that top hole to the bottom it actually looks more straighter going out okay so that's that little job done i still need to get i'm going to get a new uh uh brake stop brake switch there it's a little sticky anyway i'll be back okay guys there's that little fuse thing i was trying to find the little end that screws in there was busted and like i said it was rusted so i put in this newer one uh anyway the uh headliner fell down again and these aren't the old style where uh you can just you know the old 80s 80s stuff there where the where the headliner material just falls down this this doesn't do that it's all kind of compact into a bunch of layers and uh you can't just peel this off and you know there's not a hard backing on 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 it so anyway uh somebody mentioned 3m headliner and landau roof well there couldn't find anything like that i put on uh, ebay and this just says headliner adhesive uh first thing we tried was this loctite wasn't worth a shit then we tried this it lasted about five days and then it fell down this high strength 90 so i don't know if this is any stronger I'm hoping it is. So it's dry time 60 minutes. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do what we did last time and uh, spray it all in there. Let it tack up. Stick it up there. If that don't work, I, I'm not sure what to... I have to take it out and use some contact cement. So anyway, I'm going to do that. Uh, I got the brake stuff done except for bleeding it that one problem on the back here uh, i put this 12 bolt in there it used to have a 10 bolt so with this little bracket it doesn't line up so i don't want to take it apart again anyway i got the new the new rubber line in there right there uh, you can see it okay and the little T connection so I might be able to build a little bracket from here to here it's pretty tight either that here's a little factory clips they're still in there there and over there 
Yeah, this is uh it's crunched a little bit, but it still blows air through there, so uh or I could put some heavy duty zip ties like right here and here. Something like that. But I'll probably see if I can build a little bracket. I think I can. And then bolt it to that. Okay, other than that, yeah, she's uh I got all new brake shoes and brake uh wheel cylinders on there, so they're all screwed in there. And uh we're just gonna pump it up and see if we can uh, get it all bled. And then some, I need to do a little bit more pour 15 under here. Uh, little areas that I missed like there. And then this back, just this back part here. I'm gonna scuff that up and pour 15 that. Other than that, I think it's just about done with getting pour 15 under here. Okay, so let me get all that done and uh, we'll be back with some more stuff to do uh, yeah it took about a week for that headliner to hang down I pulled down that back you can see here it's oh actually you know what it might be sticking up here anyway uh, trying to glue her one more time I'll be back. Okay, guys. We got that headliner re-glued. We'll see if it holds. Uh, I didn't do this top front part. Because it actually was sticking pretty good. This is the little dent right here. So, it's not... Okay, so we'll see. I don't know. Might be a week or so. Before we know what's going to happen. Okay, uh, I'm going to put in the rear carpet section here. I believe it only goes in the rear carpet, and we'll put the seat in too. Uh, I believe the rear carpet only comes up to about here. Um, and we're going to put some insulation here. Possibly here. Also, here's the rear carpet section. It came with the... Uh, it came with insulation anyway. I don't really know if we need any more than that. Okay, so. This is where it goes up over a little bit. Okay, and then this is some of that insulation I bought from uh, Lowe's. It's not sticky, though. Might put a little contact cement or something on there duct tape or something but yeah I think we'll definitely need it here okay then uh, this goes up for the uh, interior light I'm just gonna leave it kind of tape it to the floor uh, in case I do something with it later I probably won't but uh, the interior light don't fit with this new headliner plus I got the two from the Jeep right there so we're just going to tape that instead of snipping it off, just in case we need that harness for something. Um, so yeah, that carpet will go... I don't know how far that goes up. Probably about up to here, behind the back seat, I guess. Like I said, I don't think we need any insulation for this. We're going to put some seam sealer in these uh, uh, seat belt holes, because... Uh, they're too rusty to put the bolts in, the heads rounded off and everything. So we'll seal that up and put that all in there. So I'll be back when I get that done. Okay, guys. I got duct tape that in there a little bit. Uh, fixing to put the carpet. I'm not going to put any down here because that insulation for the carpet covers that. Uh... So anyway, just cut out the holes for the seat mounting things, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, here's the carpet laid in there. You guys put a little duct tape here to hold it. Uh, put the seat over the top. Um, you had to cut, trim it quite a bit on the edges. Over here and here. But anyway, you're going to put it in the back seat. 
Uh, the little sill plates here. Oh, I got to put a little piece of carpet here. And uh, these panels. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, here's the little sill plates. I'm going to take some steel wool, clean them up. Uh, bend up a little bit there, dolly it out flat. I got some new chrome screws. And uh, I'll mount them in there like that. So I'll be back. Okay guys, I got the back seat in. Still need to clean a little bit. And yeah, it sh should be recovered, but... Oh well. I don't know if I'll do it or not. Anyway, I got a little problem here. It's, uh... See, this carpet kit's for a two-door. So a two-door back seat actually comes out like that. So, uh... Yeah, it's some... So I'll see if I can find a piece of carpet that can uh, butt up to this and hide that. Got that on both sides. But other than that, it uh, looks alright. Good enough. Okay, headliner's holding. We'll give it a few more days. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, here's the glove box lid here, you can see she's all scratched up and everything. You know what these are? These are cup holders. <laughs> Not very good for when you're driving, but if you're like at an A&W drive-in or something, you pull that down and you put your cups there. Okay. Uh, sand all this down paint it black uh, I don't know if I'm gonna fix these little dents here probably not I gonna sand all this down paint that black and then we'll paint the uh, the jam here all that black we we'll get a little bit of black going and get a little bit of paint we still got to paint all the uh, tailgate jam and all that but Probably save that till later for a different. So uh, this is the paint I use here. Where is my black? Right here. I got just a little bit left. I'll be buying another gallon when I paint the whole car. It'll be a ways off. Uh, you can even see. Can you even see that? This is the paint that I use on most of my cars. Nissan full thing 2K urethane and uh it's, it's pretty reasonable i don't know if the, i'm sure the prices have gone up on this too but it used to be about 120 bucks for a gallon of black of course you get into the metallics and all that it could be three four hundred bucks but just plain black's the cheapest uh so i'll be buying some more of that that's what we'll be painting the whole car with as you can see, here's, you know, here's for my 69 Chevelle, the gray, the silver for the 78 Nova. Okay, so, uh, I'll be doing that. I'll, I'll come back when I get it ready to prime, something like that. Okay, I'll be back. Feeding time at the zoo. And what do you want to play with the football? Okay, guys, it rained a little bit this morning, not much, but uh, it's going to be back up into the mid-90s tomorrow. It's down to, I think it's 82 right now, which would be perfect if it was, you know, the rest of the week or month or summer, but okay, I stripped these down the metal. I don't think the rain affected it. Okay, so I'm about to prime them. Got the sand a little bit more. Uh, prime them. Let it dry. Scuff it down. And then uh, we'll paint that black. And these jams here black. Okay, I got uh, 
little brake light switch at AutoZone for uh, 13, 13 something. Uh, about the same price on eBay. So, okay, I got the rag joint in assembly. Uh, can't really see that too good. The bolt's down there. This bolt here. So I'll, I'm going to turn this over. So it's over this way. And uh, put that whole assembly on. And then bolt it. These two bolts. Right there. Right there and there. And then we're going to kind of mount that up. So it's kind of straight. I don't think I had to loosen that all the way. I'm going to probably put these bolts in here. Maybe put some uh, uh, insulation around it. Stick these bolts in the cover. And just kind of stick it up on, on the bottom of the column there. Just so it doesn't get... Well, it shouldn't break or anything with the new rag joint. But just so it doesn't get any tension on it. So, those are the first three things I'm going to start off with. Um... I think that's all. Oh, uh, oh, you can't really see it. It's leaking brake fluid at the bottom here. And see the, yeah, you can still see it dripping. This, it actually came with uh, two sets of bolts. And I, I can't, I think I used the shorter ones. But anyway, I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I got them in a box here somewhere. I'll try the other bolts. I'm not sure what, uh, what the deal is. This one's not leaking. Maybe it doesn't have any fluid over there yet. But I'm pretty sure that's how, uh, the washers are supposed to go. But anyway, I'm going to put in them other longer bolts, see if that helps. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the new rag joint on there. I didn't bolt this all the way on yet. It's just kind of... I just kind of propped it up here. I didn't want to put these bolts in here because I probably got to pull it down again uh, to put out all the gauges and stuff in there. Anyway, got that done. Got the little uh, brake light switch here in. Uh, as far as the, these caliper lines there, had the other bolts. These bolts here were longer, and I tried to put them in, and, and they just, like, bottomed out, so they were less loose. So it has to be these ones. So I, I put a wrench and a hammer on it and just tighten it up, you know, and just before it felt like it was about to strip. And uh, we'll see. It's not dripping anymore. But hopefully... It just needed a lot of pressure on there to crush them little copper washers, but I don't know. felt like I was about to strip it out, just hammering it on there. Uh, so we'll see. I'll try to bleed them and all that later on. Get my little one-man bleeder and try to do it. Okay, so we got those little jobs done. About to prime, prime these areas here. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, I'm uh, painting these areas. Got my little cheap Harbor Freight gun, some of that black paint. And we're just uh,
we're gonna put on two coats okay I already did that doing a little bit on the tailgate here that area there uh, I didn't have enough time before it gets dark to sand all these jams really good so I just did the top okay uh, gonna do the uh, inside of these fenders where it's primered I got that primered and then this little area where I did the patch put some prime on that I'm gonna get the paint in there best best I can okay I got the two uh, kick panels I'm just gonna go ahead and paint them with the car paint um, the back tailgate cover got one coat on that and then of course the uh, glove box liner I got one coat on that so uh, let me put another coat on these and uh, I'll be back okay guys I got two coats on everything the jams around the back there uh, especially the inside of these fenders okay the uh, these parts here okay and if you noticed it rained a little bit yesterday and if you noticed a little bit of surface rust here so I got a little small paint brush and I'm gonna just paint that with a brush I think that's all that's going to rust with just water on it. I think this is probably stainless steel. But I'll put some li a little paint on that, maybe some on this. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so next morning, here's that tailgate cover. I can't put that on until I take off all this stuff and paint it and put it back on. But anyway, it's ready to put on when the time comes I'm gonna wait till uh, I put that carpet in the front see how much overlaps and then see if I can cut out a piece to uh, fit right in here anyway oh I got this uh, this in here off of eBay it's supposed to be six foot I guess if you really stretch it it'll be six foot but it was like 27 bucks um that's for the driver's side front cut it to fit uh won't do that yet but it's it's there when it's when it needs to be okay i spent all morning pour 15 and underneath there tried to spray but the you know you can't get the paint gun straight uh sideways and only some of it half the cup came out so I spread the rest on with a brush it was kind of a pain in the ass but I got about 90% of it done underneath there uh, I taped up some wires here put that in there I didn't tape up some of these because some of them look kind of rigged up and I'll go over them later uh, yeah, I painted the master cylinder just a little brush and some paint I'm still going to, the caliper stopped leaking, so maybe that's all it took. I can't put this on until uh, I get some weight on it in the engine. I, I tried jacking it up, but it's it's not going to move. Need some weight on it. Okay. So I think that's all the little stuff. Uh, got these fenders pretty much done. We're going to make a patch later on for this side here just like we did here but anyway I got them jammed and everything if you can see these dents here there was dents all along these fenders and they just you know cave and paved they just filled it in so that's all gonna have to be reworked it's gonna be a lot of work on these fenders uh, I believe this one's the same way but yeah, so the two major, major things, of course, the LS swap and then the bodywork. 
doesn't look bad, but there's going to be a lot. It's going to have to be all stripped down the metal. All the body work done, all the dings, dents, rust. There's really not much rust left. There's only there's only some rust in these bottom little corners here. And you can't get at it from the inside. It's kind of where it overlaps. So we're going to grind them out and uh, put little patches in them. I think there and there. Uh, other than that, there'll just be dents and dings along the sides from... 54 years of a hard life so yeah two major things ls swap body work so what we're going to do next video is i'm going to start stripping the uh silverado pickup here uh, as i mentioned in the last few videos it, it's going to start right today uh tonight right before it's 95 degrees now um and the next four days is going to be lots of rain. He says uh, a lot of rain all the time or for a long time. So it means it's not going to rain for an hour or two. It's going to like rain all day for like four days I have to build an arc or something. So I don't know, uh, I think they said seven inches, might get seven inches of rain. So that's quite a bit, that's flood type. But my property's up on, on a hill, my property never floods. It's like if it rains the next day, it's dry because it all drains out. So I'm not too worried about working in the mud or nothing like that. But if it's raining all day, there ain't much I can do unless I got some work in the garage to do. Maybe clean up the garage or something. The, the truck I want to strip outside, we're going to start by stripping all the body. Well, all the front end off of it. Um, plus, it'll be easier to sell and, of course, easier to take the engine transmission out through the front. So, we're going to take the uh, bumper grill, hood, fenders, radiator support, radiator condenser, all that stuff off the front. And we're going to start stripping the fuel system gas tank because um, I'm going to try to maybe use that fuel pump. Uh, all the fuel lines, AC lines, of course, all the electrical uh, part of the exhaust. I got to cut the catalytic converters off. Just all kinds of stripping like that. So that's going to be next video. So stay tuned for that. So in between that, and I'm not buying anything for that engine or for the swap uh until i actually need it to come across because like i said there's not there's not a specific video of somebody putting in an ls and a chevelle i mean i've heard stuff but people usually buy them kits so uh like a, you know like the motor mount relocation lift whatever i'm gonna i got motor mounts and i'll i got i got the whole truck so i got everything to you know uh see if i can make it work of course they say you got to put in the uh smaller oil pan so i'm not going to buy anything until we stick this engine transmission in here i want to see for myself how it fits if the oil pan hits hits here 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 wherever it's supposed to hit then and there's no way of of lifting it up an inch to get away from it and mounting it that way then yeah then we're gonna have to stop and I'm gonna have to order an oil pan so that's how we're gonna do the swap okay we're not just gonna buy a whole bunch of parts that that ha most of it we're not gonna need like harnesses and stuff I know I'm, I'm 99 percent sure I don't need a harness I can make everything work but of course most people buy the twelve fifteen hundred dollar harness right away which which I'm not gonna do so stuff like that the drive shaft we're gonna put the motor forwards backwards see if we can uh mount it where the drive shaft the original drive shaft is going to work because it'll save who knows hundreds of dollars of bringing it to a drive shaft shop which there ain't none around here and have it shortened or lengthened or whatever it takes so we're, if it only takes an inch going forward or backwards to make the dri original drive shaft fit that's what we're going to do so there's going to be all that kind of stuff going on okay so uh 
that's how I'm going to do it. So when I get stuck, I, well, there won't be too much stuff. Like I said, if it needs an oil pan, then we're going to work on the fuel system and, you know, other stuff. But if I, if I get stuck and can't do anything while I'm waiting on parts, then we're going to start on the bodywork. Like I said, the little rust spot, start stripping it and all that stuff. So that might be thrown in. I'd rather do the engine, get all the mechanical done, then the bodywork. But if we're stuck, we'll start on the bodywork. So that's how the next uh, series on this Nomad's going to go. Okay, so uh, I think that's it. We accomplished a lot of little stuff. I wish those belt moldings for the doors had come in. That way we can mount them door panels. Uh, they got three days or else I'm going to send another uh, another uh, complaint letter to them. Say, hey, what's up? You know, they're already two weeks overdue. But there's only one company that makes the stuff. USA company. And uh vendor is supposed to put in an order. Then they make it. Then they send it. Well, some places, some guy commented that Oh, I ordered from another vendor and I got it in three weeks. Well, you know, and then he said, oh, another vendor was $80 more. Well, that's the problem. You know, I'm not going to be spending this crazy spending $80 more than somebody else for the same product from the same company. But anyway, that's it's starting to piss me off. It's just a waiting game on that. But as soon as they come in, we're going to rivet or screw them belt moldings on the door panels here and we're gonna mount them so we'll be we'll be all done other than mounting the seat in the front carpet which take a few minutes so the interior will be you know 90% done okay so that's what we got to that's what's left on the little stuff uh, so yeah I guess that's it and then of course I'll be pumping the brakes trying to bleed them if they leak we'll I'll practice some more of my double flares and redo them little lines there. But okay, so uh, like, comment, share, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and hit the notification bell. Uh, be notified when I put out a new video, which will probably be about every four days or so. Although the next four days, if it rains, I don't get nothing done. Maybe a delay as I come up with another video or something. Okay, so uh, I guess that's it. And uh, we'll see you all next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching.